Hi there, Petula here. In today's videos, Ask the Coach, I'm gonna cover a lot of the questions that actually have been coming in about agile planning. Is it so different that we really need to behave in a very specific way when we are doing agile planning? So I figured one way of answering all those kind of questions was actually to talk to you about a few questions that you could be asking yourself and your teams when you're doing any sort of planning if you work in agile ways. So let's get started. The first question is, when does it need to be done? And I know there's a lot of misconceptions out there when people kind of think like that Agile foregoes dates, but it's really the other way around. Agile came to existence as a way of, okay, so if we understand that we have to hit a certain date, what can be done until we reach that date. I know there is a discussion about value too, and that's a very important one and don't discount it. But whenever you hear people talking about value as if it was this thing, like, you know, we don't care about dates, we care when the value is achieved. Agile speaks of the constant and early delivery of value. So you don't have to choose between dates and value. You're not saying that you deliver whatever by this date. You actually have to deliver a piece of a product, a functionality, something that will make sense by a certain date. Don't get confused. Businesses run on dates. Dates are not some random thing that people started to not like. If a contractor comes to your home and offer an option to redo your windows in two weeks or three months, you do have a different choice to make. And the same is for all types of services and products. So it is very normal that your client or the definition of something valuable has a specific date in mind and you will plan better when you know that date and then you work backwards and try and figure out, wow, how does value fit in the picture of that date? And then you will know what is possible and consider capacity and all that good stuff. So the next question would then be related to who? Who needs it? Who would care if this is not done? And that's an important question too, because once again, we talk a lot about customer value and customer, but, but who is the customer? Is it a particular type of customer that you have? Is it all the customers? Is it actually a stakeholder, which means you know another team, some other department? You have to really know who you're servicing with that thing that you're gonna do, a service, a product. So when you know who really needs that, you know who you're gonna talk to in case things go wrong, and you know who you're gonna talk to in case you need to renegotiate priorities, you can just plan better when you know who is going to scream at you either of joy because you've done a wonderful job or otherwise if you know who that person or people are and maybe even invite them to plan with you. The next question is a favorite of mine. It's something around the uh, what can we do? What can be done? Because sometimes we just receive those piles of requirements and people have a very clear idea and they want everything done by that date that we just talked about well that's not really how the world works is it things will happen shift will happen and then how will you reorganize yourself so you really need to know what really absolutely must happen as you plan so that you know what is a nice to have, what is a must have, and then you see, wow, this fits or doesn't. Because if it doesn't fit the time and budget that you might have, you might need to renegotiate that. So when you ask yourself what can be done, what I like is that you open a little bit more the, um, the possibilities because it's easy to just look at something and quickly say, nope, can be done. And I bet you've seen that, right? Some teams that are really hurt by a bad management that have happened to them before, and then they just go and plain deny things. And I think a version of that could also be, what is the simplest thing that we can do to satisfy those conditions, being date, being budget, being whatever you have in your hand. So you assume simplicity, and actually there is an agile principle about that. And um, as you assume that simplicity and you assume something can be done, a lot of creativity comes into play. And if you know me and if you've been in one of my classes, you will know that I always give the example of the login page. Imagine that you can have months until your product is done and you need people to log in and you can have them log in with Google, log in with Facebook and a lot of other good APIs there. 
If you don't have that much time, you're going to have a very plain screen having people log in with username, password, sign up. It's still the same result. People aren't able to sign in. It might not be their favorite signing method, but you see, you still ask the question, what is possible? What is the simplest thing? And you still got your login page done. And the final question would then be, what is it that we are not doing in order to tackle this thing? And that is really important because as we are doing a planning exercise, we are talking about priorities and it's the time to remind people, are we forgetting something? Is there someone else asking something else more important? Just checking. But also it brings the awareness for whoever is asking that. It could be an important stakeholder. It could be even the same customer that asks all those 10 different things and remind them, I can't do everything. I can do one thing and then another and then another. So by doing this one, I'm pushing all the other things for later. Are you okay with that? So there you have it. I hope those questions do help you grasp a little bit better and conduct better planning sessions in Agile because the only difference that you might experience from usual planning sessions to Agile planning is basically that you want to highlight priorities and values in all the constraints very early and then you want to commit to something that you really understand why, to whom, etc. I hope this video was useful for you. Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a like. If you don't like, well, say it as well. And if you are liking what you're watching here, make sure to go ahead and subscribe. And if you have any questions, you can either comment down below or you can sign up for the newsletter link down here and then keep in touch with me and keep asking all these questions that, you know, eventually they all come up being answered here for you. That's it for this video. I'll end it here and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.